Hey there everybody, John with Simplice here, and I'm going to talk through the all new custom animation features that we just released to Simplice 5. So if you're previously familiar with our motion features, you're probably used to looking for the motion tab here, but now you'll be looking in the lower left hand corner if you click this custom animation icon. It'll now open up the custom animation editor, and this is what you'll use to build out your animations. And now from the animation editor, I can click any element on my page to begin animating. You'll see with the new animation, I have the choice of four different trigger types, and that's going to determine how the animation is triggered on the page. Uh, so there's several options there. You'll also see on the left hand side, there's option to assign uh, motions to either the content, the column, or the entire section itself. Let's just go ahead and choose a when in view trigger type. And you'll see we have this nice little timeline here that we can use to build out our animation. So first what we're going to want to do is set an initial state for our animation. And that's basically going to determine how our animation starts. So in this example, I want it to fade in from the bottom and just kind of move up. So I've added a move Y value and then I'm setting the initial opacity value of 20. Then what I can do is add an additional animation step. I'm gonna give it a little label here so I know what this step does. I can also customize the easings and then also add a delay. I'm gonna add an effect here. I'm now gonna add an opacity and move value. I'm gonna set the opacity to 100 because I want it to fully fade in and then I'm going to set the move Y to 0 because I want the image to return to its original position. So if I preview that I can preview that step and you can see I can also preview the entire timeline. So let's say we want to add an additional step to that so I'm going to add one more I'm going to call it rotate. I'm going to add a rotate effect here. I'm going to give it a value of 360 so it does a complete full spin. And I kind of want it to pause a little bit before it does that. So I'm going to add a delay. And if I go back, I can preview this entire timeline. Click preview. And there's our custom animation. So you also have some other options. You can choose to loop the animation. You can disable it for mobile. And you can also set some custom iteration amounts. And a really nice exciting new feature we just added is the animation presets. So these are really great to just quickly get you started on adding some effects to your elements. I'll try this one right here and you'll see it's already populated my timeline with the steps of that preset. So I'll click preview. Looking cool. Let's look through some other ones here. There's some looping ones we can try, also some filter effects here, which are really nice. Well, let's try a roll in and see how that looks. I'm going to preview it. Very nice. You can see how quickly it is to just apply all these effects. I'll try another one here, the scale in. It's very nice. And you can just see there's a lot you can do with these. Um, another feature we have is custom presets as well. So these are defined by you. You can create these from any existing timeline animation here. So for example, let's just elaborate a little bit further on this animation. I'm going to add a additional rotate and just make this very custom now. Add that 360 value. I can preview the individual step. And then we'll preview the timeline, which at this point is basically the same thing. All right, so we'll click the Save Preset icon. We'll give this a name so that we can remember what it does. All right, so we've saved our preset successfully, and it's now being applied to this object. Um, one important thing to note is the little green chain icon there, and that's basically letting us know that this is now a globally linked custom preset. So if I apply this preset to other elements and then I make changes in the timeline, it's going to update on all of the elements. So just keep that in mind. 
if you don't want that to happen you can just simply hit the chain icon and it will become its own individual animation again. Alright so now that we've saved that custom preset let's just go ahead and apply it to another element here. I'll choose the trigger type and then I'll choose my custom preset and there it's already populated my timeline and there is the effect that we applied above. Now one really handy feature that you're probably going to want to use a lot is the preview all button and that's basically going to allow us to preview all the animations on the page. So right now I'm just quickly adding some animations here to multiple objects so you can see it all in sequence. So I'm going to hit preview all here from the top. There's our first animation and then there are other animations as well. So that's a really nice feature to be able to see how all your animations are playing together on your page. Alright, so I just cleared out that animation and let's try a scrolling into view trigger type. I'm gonna just quickly add a little preset here. Alright, so with the scroll settings open you'll now see these scroll markers and I can use these to determine when the scroll animation will start and end. So when the start point meets the start trigger, that's when it begins scrolling. When the end point hits the end trigger, that's where it's going to end the scroll animation. So let's go ahead and preview what I just did there. And it should stop scrolling a little bit past the halfway mark of that image. And there we go. There you can see it's working and when I scroll back up it kind of reverts back. So that's a really cool way to animate on your page based on scroll. Uh, let's say we want this to this left column to be pinned while we scroll and just kind of stay in place. So what we're going to do is open up the scroll settings and I'm going to go to this pin content option. I'm going to click yes. I'm going to add a duration amount and that's going to be for how long we're going to keep it pinned on the page and then I'm going to use this pin spacing and that's going to add space below the element as it scrolls. We'll click yes and let's go ahead and just preview that on the page see how it all looks. Scrolling on through there is the animation on the right and then our left column is now pinned and then it stops after that duration that we set is, is met. So that's a really cool way to pin content on your page all right, so let's scroll on down and see what else we can apply some custom animations to. And this right here is actually a Lottie module. I'm going to preview so you can see it in action. As you can see now, as I scroll, it's playing through frames from this animation. So Lottie basically allows you to export animations from After Effects straight into Simplice. So it's a really powerful tool. I'm not going to go over it all in this tutorial. We're going to make a separate one uh, because as you can see it has its own options and uh, there's a lot you can do with it. So we're going to save that for another tutorial. And then moving on down the page, um, let's, let's add a quick little image effect here. I'm going to add a, let's try a mouse over so you can see that interaction. I'm um, going through a preset list. Uh, let's just do a grow so it's going to scale up a little bit. And if I want to preview the interaction, I'll hit preview all. And then that'll, there it is, that nice little scaling effect when I hover. It's really nice. And then moving on down, I have some images here that we can, well, let's just go ahead and experiment and try some different effects on these. Let's do a mouse over on this first one. I'll uh, let's try um, let's try some filters. Let's try hue rotate, and I'm going to give it a 360 values, so it just completely rotates through the color spectrum. I'm going to preview that. It looks pretty cool, like a holographic effect. Um, this middle one will do a a click trigger. Let's give it a border effect and then I'll kind of have it shrink down a little bit when it's clicked on. That looks about right. And 
Let's also kind of have it invert the colors. Just get a little crazy with it. Okay, I'll just go ahead and preview that. Looking good. Um, and now for this last one, let's just do uh, let's do some kind of like persistent rotating effect. So what I'm going to do is going to go to presets, and I'm going to go to the looping, and we'll just do the looping rotate. Now I kind of don't like how it's overlapping on the other two, so what I'm going to do is go to the initial state. I'll just reduce the scale values. And the cool thing is it's it's going to retain the scaling throughout the animation unless I tell it to do otherwise. Um, but let's just preview. There it is. A little bit smaller now, and it's doing that cool rotating effect. So I really like that. And let's just preview them all together now on the page. There's our rotating cube, which is pretty cool. If I click that, there's our animation. And then when I hover over this, it's kind of playing through, and when I leave, it's kind of reverting. Um, let's say we want that to just kind of loop while we hover. So I'm going to select the loop option now. And if I preview now, it's just going to loop through that rotation. Hit OK, and let's just preview that again so you can see. There, now when I hover, it's just continuing the loop, which is pretty cool. All right, so as kind of a last step, I want to show you how you can apply motion and animations to entire sections. So I have this really big full width image here. I'm going to go to section. Let's do another cool kind of pin scrolling effect. So the initial state, let's uh, let's make it grayscale. So basically it's going to start out black and white and then as we scroll some colors gonna just start fading in which should look really cool all right I'll just kinda zero that out and then preview now let's go into our scroll settings so I'm not gonna change too much from what's already here because it's already kinda set up how I want it I'm gonna preview and as you scroll, you can see it's just shifting the colors there like we want it to. But it's not doing that pin effect yet. So I'm going to go into the scroll settings. And I'm going to make sure to turn on the pin content. Once again, when the start point meets the start trigger, that's when it's going to initiate the scroll event. So in this case, it looks the way we want it to. Alright, so when I preview, that entire section should get pinned to the browser while we scroll. And there we go, you can see it's changing the color now. And then now we're scrolled past it. So, really cool effect. One other last really neat feature I'd like to talk about is the bulk apply option. So this is a really great way to apply presets to multiple objects at once on your page. So for example, I'm going to set a trigger type and I'm going to choose a preset and then I'm going to apply that to all the images on my entire page. So I'll click apply and now all these images will have the preset that I selected. So there you can see them all scrolling and fading in. Of course I can also remove all the animations on the page by clicking reset animations. You'll see now there's no animations taking place anymore. Of course, you can also use the undo feature just like you would in the content editor to undo any custom animation changes. All right, well, that about covers all the basics of using the all new custom animation editor. I hope you enjoyed this little tutorial overview. And of course, we're really excited to see what you create with the all new custom animation options. There's really endless possibilities that you can use these for and we're just excited to see what you create next. So thanks for watching and keep on rocking with some please.